hi everyone and today's video is going to be about Scotland, Scotland's place in Britain, my thoughts on the SNP, that sort of thing. So that's what today's video is going to be about. So just a bit of a disclaimer, as you could probably hear, I am not from Scotland, but I do live in the UK, so I do have a lot of opinions on this. So I have always seen Scotland as the most progressive part of the UK, because when you take a look at the Conservative governments that have been elected over the UK-wide, the Tories have not won a majority of Scottish seats in Westminster for about 56 years. Now, they haven't won a majority of Scottish seats in Westminster since about the 1950s or 60s, I think that was the last time. They did have a little bit of a resurgence, but obviously not on a huge scale, because Ruth Davidson was actually really popular. Uh, she was the former Scottish uh, Conservative leader until she uh, packed it all in, but she was actually quite popular. And then, and um, under her leadership, they sort of had a sort of resurgence in Scotland in the 2017 election. And without those Scottish seats that they gained in 2017, the Conservatives would have not been able to form that coalition with the DUP, which kept them in power. But but right now, um, Jackson Carlo is sort of their interim leader. He's currently running a campaign to be their full-time leader, but he's only their interim leader right now because he stepped in when Ruth Davison left. And when it comes to the Scottish Labour Party, my god have they had a fall in scotland i mean in 2010 they had like 40 seats like at like the height of labor's popularity from 97 to 2010 when they were in, in government scotland had like 40 seats then came the tsunami in 2015 when labor were pretty much wiped out in scotland and they were wiped out and lost most of their seats to the smp with um ian murray the only Scottish Labour MP from 2015 to 2017. They had a bit of a resurgence in 2017 when they went from one seat to seven seats and then they lost six seats in Scotland in 2019, the last election, where Ian Murray again was the only sole Labour MP in Scotland. And you know what, Scotland do have a history of voting Labour, like Scotland used to be a Labour heartland, like you couldn't imagine Scotland voting any other party in when it came to the Labour Party, but then the SNP kind of took over uh, being the ruling party in Scotland and I think that did come from a rise of nationalism and that did come from wanting change because because Labour had been in power for so long in Scotland I think a lot of people saw voting for the SNP not voting for the establishment and I can sort of understand that because like third parties have actually gained in popularity since like the whole Brexit debacle but like the whole SNP rise happened when they first won a minority government in Scotland in in Holyrood in 2007 and then because of the success of that minority government, they then got elected on a majority government in, in Holyrood in 2011, Scottish Parliament election. And then because of that majority government in 2017, they were able to legislate for a Scottish independence referendum in 2014. And then after 2014, even though they lost that referendum because Scotland voted to stay in the UK, on the back of that referendum, they stormed the Westminster elections in 2015 on the height of popularity from that independence referendum. The SNP are built on Scottish independence. They are filled with genuine socialists like Mahari Black, who I think is a genuine socialist. But then they have people who are former conservatives like Tasmina Sheikh, who used to be an SNP MP until she lost her seat. So I think that that's that's what gives the SNP some sort of like broad church coverage. When it comes to like the SNP, they have done a few good things in Scotland. Like they have abolished the bedroom tax, they have kept university tuition free. But my problem with the SNP is that I don't believe they're progressive enough. But I do have friends in the SNP who are just as left wing as I am. And I think if the SNP were to be encouraged to move lefter to where they are now, that would be a good thing. But then because there is such a bitter rivalry between the Labour Party and the SNP, because the SNP and the Labour Party are bitter rivals in Scotland. 
So that's why they can't work together to sort of attack the Tories together because the Tories aren't in government in Holyrood and it is the job of opposition parties to kind of scrutinise the government. So then when you come to the decisions that are made in Holyrood, most of them are taken by the SNP because they are in government even though they don't have a majority. I have been positive about some things that the SNP have done. I also do have a little bit of criticisms on, on them as well because I, I don't think they're giving us much attention to education and and healthcare and important issues like that that matter to everyday Scots. I do think Scottish education used to be one of the leading education systems in the world but it has been slipping under the SNP and that when it comes to healthcare their NHS is performing much better than the England NHS, which is something uh, that uh, they can be praised for. Things like prescriptions are free in Scotland, and that is something that was brought in by an SNP government. And I think that matters to people because, like, in England, you have to pay £9 for a prescription, and that is something that can be a lot of money to low-income families, and that might put off people from getting treatment that they urgently need. So. Free medicine is something they've definitely gotten right in Scotland and I think something that should be happening in in England too and it would have happened if we elected a, a Labour government. SNP have been very critical, rightly so I should say, of the austerity policies that are coming from Westminster from this Conservative government. So I do wonder how the situation would be different if it was a Labour government who wasn't doing austerity and was actually increasing public spending and spending on public services, increasing the Scottish, increasing the Scottish government's uh, budget and then putting money into local councils. So I wonder how the situation would be different there and I do wonder how the SNP would react because I do think that if there was a progressive government in the UK that kind of would counter some of the arguments that the SNP have been putting forward. So I wonder how that would change things if we had a progressive government in Westminster. And right now, I am a supporter of the union and I do support Scotland staying in Britain and I want that to happen. But because I do have friends in the SNP and I do have Scottish friends who are political but not in the SNP or not in any party and they have kind of opened my eyes to the good arguments of independence because all of the friends I have in Scotland, even people in the Labour Party, which is supposed to be a British Unionist party, do support independence and talking to them, I can understand why they support independence and and like when it comes to my opinion on a second referendum, uh, my tweet went viral. Uh, I tweeted that as a English person who is a member of a party that Scotland don't vote for, who am I to say to Scotland that they aren't able to have a second referendum I, I think that would be democratically wrong that if the will of the Scottish people were that they wanted a referendum why can't they have one because if it's their democratic will I think I kind of got the inspiration for this video at a right time because today in Holyrood the SNP passed a motion that that basically calls for another independence referendum and if the SNP do win a majority in 2021. I don't think the arguments of the 2014 Better Together campaign kind of hold up, and especially when it comes to what the SNP have been saying in their manifesto, because pretty much every manifesto since 2014, I think since Brexit as well, like before Brexit happened, there was a Scottish Parliament election, and what the SNP said in that manifesto was that if there are circumstances, that change in the UK, then we would want to hold another independence referendum. And they specifically mentioned Scotland being dragged out of the EU against their will. And in 2016, Scotland voted Remain, while England voted Leave. And because there are more Englanders in the UK than Scotland, England kind of overpowered the Scottish people, sort of. And, and you know, even though my personal position is that we should leave the EU, I can understand what the SNP are saying here because the SNP have basically marked their whole argument of having another independence referendum is that, well, we're being taken out of the EU against our will. Didn't you read our manifesto? So I think that that is a, a valid argument then. I don't think us as the English people can say no when 
that the Scottish people have consistently voted for the SNP time and time and time again. And what have they said in their manifesto? Indy Ref 2, please. I generally hope a solution can be found for the whole situation of Brexit and Scotland. And I generally hope a situation can be found over the whole union issue because I don't want the union to split up. I am a bit confused about the SNP's independence plans and let me tell you why. Because in 2014, they said that they want to leave the UK but they still want to keep our monarchy and they still want to keep our pound which is tied to the Bank of England in a currency union. So. If they are in a currency union, which is tied to the Bank of England, Scotland won't have financial control on some of their spending plans. So their whole idea of independence wouldn't even be a thing. I know it has been a long time since 2014 and I know the SNP have shifted have shifted more to the left since the departure of Alex Salmond and the instalment of Nicola Sturgeon as leader of the SNP. So I think things have changed now, like when it comes to the SNP, I think they did mention that they do want to move to an independent uh, currency, which in my mind is what they should have been saying in 2014. Because in my mind, an independent Scotland would be a republic and would have its own independent currency. That is that is what makes the most sense to me like if i was a scottish person that is that is what i would want but the snp have mentioned time and time again that they do want to rejoin the eu as a full member and i don't think that joining the euro would be a good idea you know i have always been against joining the euro like back when i was a kid and joining the euro could have been a possibility brown said no and i think that was probably one of his best decisions but when you think about it single currencies in my mind do not work and i don't think having a single currency controlled to one central bank is a good idea so i think that is one of the failures of the eu i want to get into the whole debate about the euro because this isn't what this video is about but if you were to join the euro you would have less control over your financial policies because it would be controlled by a central bank but yeah, that is the gist of why I've never been in favour of the Euro. Then, there is this myth that was spread around in 2016 by the Leave campaign that if you are going to join the EU, you have to join the Euro. That is a myth. We've been a member of the EU for 40 years and last time I checked, I paid for my things in pounds. So, and, and Denmark don't have the Euro. Then the SNP did say in 2014, and they're still saying it now, that they do not support joining the Euro, which in my mind is the best position to have. When it comes to like the Scottish Parliament, I have always been in favour of max devolution. And I think that is something that should have happened like five years ago or like 10 years ago or, or like when the parliament was first set up by the new Labour government, there should have been an agreement to transfer all the powers to Scotland so they could still have their own parliament, but then still be part of Britain and still be part of the UK system and still have the benefits of being part of the UK system. So I think Max Evolution not happening yet has been a bit of a disgrace and it was promised to them in 2014, wasn't it? And it still hasn't happened. So I don't know what's going on there. I mean, like, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Scotland does leave the UK now after everything that's happened with Brexit and after everything that has happened since the 2000, since the 2014 Better Together campaign. And like, like I am not happy with how the Better Together campaign, how Labour stood side to side with the Tories. I am not happy with that. But then when it came to like the Yes campaign, I think the SNP kind of sold it as like a magic wand to fix all your problems. And I don't think that is completely true. So like both sides of the argument in, in 2014 weren't exactly sugar cut and weren't exactly that great either. But one thing I will commend the SNP on is that in 2014 they did release their white paper and even though my opinion on that white paper was that their economy was going to be too heavily centred on oil which would never work now because of the climate emergency and everyone's all fascinated with a green new deal rightfully so but that would never fly now so if they were going to be an independent country they would have to move away from oil being the bank of their um, economy which is something I think they should be working towards if they want to become an independent country. So that's really all I have to say about Scotland now. Um, I bet I've missed a few things, but that is basically the bulk of my thoughts on the whole Scotland issue in the UK. So I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.